The A93 is a feature loaded camera from Sony. Uh, let me talk to you about how I would configure it for an underwater system. Now, of course we have the camera body and lens, but from there, let's talk about the housing. Here I have the housing pre-configured with the optional right handle and extensions. Um, take a look at this video here. We'll explain to you how to put that onto your system. And on the left-hand side of me here, you'll have the USB-C bulkhead. This is a new innovation from us that will allow you to keep the camera and the lens in the housing and allow you to offload your images through that bulkhead as well as charge your camera. This is very, very useful, especially when you're considering these super large lenses that require you to take the port on and off to disassemble the system and reassemble. So that is an invaluable feature that I would highly suggest adding to your housing. Uh, on the back here, I have the standard viewfinder that comes with the housing but I also travel with the 45 degree viewfinder. Uh, it depends on the application that I'm doing. Sometimes I'll be shooting LCD screen only uh, onto which I don't need this, uh, but there are scenarios where I do prefer that angle of approach on the back because it lets me get the housing down low. I shoot at an upward angle. So check out the video on how to add this to your housing. It's very simple to take on and off. Um, also, what I don't have on the housing would be the trim rail system. Now, if I'm shooting natural light video, uh, which is very much an option with this camera, something that I might find myself doing, I can use the trim weight system to really trim out the weight of the system in the water um, and make it very maneuverable and easy on me when I'm swimming through and I don't have arms or strobes attached. Uh, from there, uh, obviously if I'm shooting photos, which is something I would also do with the A9 III, I would have an entire strobe system of our pro professional grade strobes with a TTL system for automatic communication. Uh, but other than that, let's dive right into how you put this together. So let's just dive right into assembly here. Uh, in order to open the back, what we're going to do is lift up on the lock of each lid snap and lift each lever. And then you're going to lift that off the hook of the back and that will allow you to remove the back, which we can take and set to the side here. Inside, you're gonna find a camera mount, and that camera mount has a quarter 20 screw that comes up to the bottom, and that corresponds to the quarter 20 mount on the bottom of your camera. Take the LCD screen on the camera and move it out. Align that screw with the mount on the bottom of the camera, and then using a flat-headed screwdriver, simply snug that down. Now, it's important to get this snug. You don't want it loose. Any movement between the camera and this camera mount will translate to movement and misalignment with controls. So make sure that's snug and make sure that your LCD screen still has movement. At this point in time, you would have gone through all your camera systems and make sure everything was set um, before you go and put it in the housing. You can still access everything in the housing, but knowing your camera, just like you know the back of your hand, is the way to get better photos underwater. So in order to install this in the housing, what I'm gonna do is just simply move the back button focus lever. I'm gonna make sure each of the controls is pushed up and out of the way so that it does not interfere as I slide that camera into place. On the side of the camera, you're going to notice that I have a door that will expose the USB-C port. Um, that's what's going to go to the USB-C cord that I have translating over through my USB-C bulkhead. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And I'm also going to attach the hot shoe to the top. In this case, I have a manual hot shoe. Oftentimes I'd be shooting a TTL system, so that would be the TTL hot shoe. That's a simple replacement of what comes with the housing. Uh, but either way, you're gonna want your hot shoe, whether it's TTL or manual, to be slid further all the way forward. And then you're gonna take your camera mount, align it with the base in the housing, and then making sure you have your USB-C cord kind of tucked out of the way, drop it down into place, and then realign all of your drive controls including the AF on button lever from the back there. Now we can put the back on the housing. Take this, set this aside for a moment. Let's take a look at our back. Take a moment to uh, visually inspect your O-ring. Make sure you don't have any hair or debris. This is what we call a compression seal. This is not a piston seal. And because it's not a piston seal, it does not require lubricant to overcome any friction that you'll occur when you're putting the two pieces together. That helps a lot because when you put lubricant on an O-ring, it has a tendency to attract debris. So this is a very reliable seal here on the back. And then we basically check the sealing surface that we're about to put that O-ring onto, make sure it is also clean. Line the back up with the front. And then at this point, you're going to take the lid snaps, lay them over the hooks on all three hooks of the back. 
and then simultaneously left and right, click that down into place, and you should know that the lock engages and you are not able to open that accidentally. And then finally, we'll do the top there as well and check that lock as well. And that is basically the gist of the main housing assembly. So let's turn our attention to the lens and the port system. On the inside of the housing, you will have noticed that when you got it, there was a port cover cap and that was held in place by this retaining ring. We'll use the retaining tool to remove that ring, set it aside, and in this case, drop our, retain our gear sleeve into place and hold it in place with that same ring using the tool to snug it down. No need to get crazy over tightening this. This just keeps that ring from falling out forward. And at this point, I would use the lens release control, which is here to remove the body cap. Make sure you keep that with your spare parts. Take your lens. Make note of the indexing dot here. In this particular case, the ring is a friction fit all the way around the circumference of the lens. So I don't have an orientation that I have to worry about. So all I got to do is roughly note where the indexing dot is on the lens and the indexing dot on the body and then slide into place like so. Bayonet onto the camera body and lock on just like you would outside of the housing. And I do take an opportunity to check to make sure that my zoom gear is zooming my lens. And now I'm ready to put the port system over that lens and waterproof the system. In this particular case, I need a 50 millimeter extension and the large dome port. So what I'm going to do is check to make sure that all three thumb screws are backed out of my extension. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the port just to make sure that those thumb screws don't affect the O-ring as they glide past. So taking the included Eyclite lubricant, I'm going to visually inspect and apply lubricant to the main O-ring on the port base of the housing. And what you're looking for is any debris or hair, and you're also applying a small film of lubricant here. Don't over lube this, the lube is not what's creating the seal. The lube is what's reducing the friction as the two pieces glide together. We will do the same thing on the extension. Again, visually inspecting the O-ring while applying that film of lubricant. And I also like to check my sealing surfaces. In this case, it's that vertical wall on the extension. I run my finger across that vertical wall in addition to visually inspecting it, you can feel anything that can compromise a seal. Sometimes before or without even seeing it. I'll do the same thing on the port. And with this particular combination, I'm going to put the extension on the port and I'm going to put that assembly onto the housing. So in order to do that, you'll notice that there are three thumb screws on each of these. And there are three pockets on the extension as well as three pockets on the port base of the housing. So I'm gonna want one of these screws to correspond to the top shade, which if you look, one of these three thumb screws is going to correspond with the top of the shade. And only one of those three thumb screws is gonna to correspond to that, the other two will not. So we know that's gonna be our top. So we'll line that one up with the pocket here. And what you really wanna do here is make sure that they are fully put together all the way flush, and then you can tighten down that thumb screw. That is a retaining thumb screw. It does not need to be over tightened. The seal occurred when we put the two pieces together. Making sure it's sitting all the way flush. And double checking to make sure that our three thumb screws are still not protruding to the inside diameter. We're going to make sure that, remember, one of these thumb screws corresponded with the shade, and that's what we want at the top. So we're gonna take that, and that is going to align with the top pocket of our port base. And again, just like putting the extension onto port, make sure it pressed all the way down fully flush. Before you tighten these thumb screws down, you wanna make sure that those two pieces are actually flush together. And that is as simple as that. 
Now you have a waterproof system for the Sony A93 here, but there is one more thing that I do to this housing before I take it in the water, and that is apply a vacuum. The vacuum system is very simple yet extremely effective. What you're gonna to wanna to do is press the button on the valve that's going to release the cap from the vacuum valve. And then you're going to insert the barb from the pump into that valve at which point you will pump the housing and create a vacuum. You're evacuating all of the air inside the housing. Now, once you've evacuated the air, the number that you choose is not what's critical here. What is critical is that we are not losing vacuum. That's indicating that it, the housing is holding a vacuum. Air can't make it inside the housing, and therefore if air can't make it inside the housing, then neither can water. So basically what you're looking for is to create a vacuum. I choose 10 inches of mercury on the gauge. I do do a quick visual inspection to make sure that that gauge is not dropping. And then at this point, what I'll do is remove the vacuum plug from the vacuum valve on the housing. You'll notice that I did not release the vacuum from the housing, and that's because you're gonna want to dive with the housing under a vacuum. A vacuum will reinforce all of the closing mechanisms and basically prevent the port from coming off, especially if you find yourself in rough water. But anytime you take the barb out, make sure you put the cap back in. Now in a perfect world, you would have been able to do this the night before, set this up, have it by the door waiting for you. And then the next morning, what you can do is because the housing would have maintained that vacuum overnight, all you do is simply open it up, take the cap out, reinsert the barb from your pump. And you'll notice that immediately, as soon as you do that, you're going to jump right back to where you left it. You'll lose a slight amount due to what's in the tube, but we went to 10 and we're back to 10. So that would have meant in that case, you would have been overnight and it would have held that vacuum overnight. Now, if you don't have that kind of time, you know, give yourself 10, 15 minutes and give yourself a check. And it's just a reassuring fact that if it held a vacuum for that time, that you know that there's no major leaks and you're able to get back in the water. So what you're gonna do, again, recap the valve. And this housing is fully vacuumed. It's ready to get in the water, it's reinforced. If you tried to take the back off, you wouldn't be able to. If you tried to take the port off, you wouldn't be able to. Dive with it under a vacuum, come back. And here's what is important. If you want to open this system, you have to release the vacuum. So in order to disassemble your system, now in my case, because I have the USB-C system, I don't have to do this till the very end of my week of diving because I've been able to charge and offload my images. But in order to get this open, I do have to release that vacuum. So to do that, all you do is simply release the cap from the vacuum valve. And in this case, like I said, if you're on a boat and don't have access to your pump and something comes up, let's say you forgot a lens cap, which you should have check because you would have taken a picture before you walked out the door, but it happens and you have to take your system open. Uh, go ahead, use the pencil, make sure you're in a dry environment. But in this case, we're gonna use the pump, stick it in, and you'll notice again, the vacuum jumps back to where we left it. In this particular case, I can prove the point by opening the back or attempting to, and I would not be able to because that back is now the vacuum differential and pressure is keeping that back onto the front. So in order for me to remove that or the port, all I have to do is release the vacuum. And with the vacuum equalized, now I can open my system, disassemble my gear, and again, be ready to go on the next trip. If you have any questions or comments about the A93 or any of the systems mentioned in this video, please drop a comment down below or feel free to shoot us an email to iCloud at iCloud.com or give us a call.